Let's begin by going back in time. It is now 140 AD. Hadrian's Wall was just built in present-day England. The first seismograph was just invented in China. And Ptolemy is writing both geography and almagest. If we look at the sky, we can see the stars, sun, and some of the planets. For now, let's focus on Mars, and we'll use the constellations as reference. As we discussed before, Mars typically moves in an easterly direction, or prograde motion. If the Earth were stationary at the center of the solar system, we would only see prograde motion, which would be the result of all the planets and the Sun orbiting around the Earth. However, since the Earth orbits the Sun along with the other planets, this is not always the case. Wait, did you catch that last part? Let's watch it again. Mars seems to be moving temporarily west. This backwards motion was the cause for confusion for centuries, with astronomers creating various proposals to try and justify it. Aristotle, one of the first great philosophers, postulated that the stars, sun, and planets were pinned to a number of celestial spheres which rotated around the Earth. About 1800 years later, Ptolemy revised this model by preserving the Earth-focused concept but eliminating the celestial spheres. Rather, Ptolemy believed that the planets moved in small circles or epicycles while orbiting around the Earth. Ptolemy's calculations for the planet's retrogrades were reasonably accurate and his model was widely accepted for almost 15 centuries until Nicholas Copernicus suggested a radical idea. The Sun is in the center of the solar system. As we now know, this heliocentric model more closely resembles our actual solar system, however it is not entirely correct. As we will explore later in the lab, retrograde motion is a result of our perception of other planets from Earth. But first, let's practice identifying it. <laughs> 